Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Everything OneNote. Today I'm talking specifically about the Class Notebook and I'm going to go a bit of a how-to, a bit of a beginner's guide to the Class Notebook if you're new to the Class Notebook. So we're going to look at how it works, we're going to look at distribution, reviewing student work, the teacher only section, managing your notebooks and a really cool feature called Collab Space Permissions. All right, so let's get straight in. The first one we're going to talk about is the class notebook in general, what it, how it works, how it's set up, that sort of stuff. And if you're new to OneNote, some of the key things you need to know about that. So I'll give it credit a little infograph here that sort of explains each of the sections you have in a class notebook. So the class notebook differs from a normal notebook in its permission settings and that as the teacher or the owner of that notebook, you have different permission settings to what the students do or the members. First one is the content library, and that's where a lot of your work is going to go and a lot of work is going to sit. So this is where teachers can upload and create content in this space, but students only have read-only access. So they can click on videos, they can click on links, they can scroll through the information and read it, that sort of stuff, but they aren't able to edit. They can't highlight, they can't underline, they can't answer questions in there. That's a place for you to, from there, once you're ready, you then send that out to the students, which is a process called distribution, which we're going to talk about later. The collaboration space is a great place where teachers and students, as its name, can collaborate. So they can all work in the same space together. It can get a bit out of control. Using tables and allocating sections to specific students, things like that, or just creating random mind maps can give you a bit more control in there. But I'm going to go through a class space permissions later, which enables you to create a section and lock that off to specific students that you give you a little bit more control and who's doing what and pushing work out to the students that way. The teacher only section is a place that the students can't even see. They don't have, it's not that they don't have edit or read access, it doesn't even appear on their notebook. So that's a place, private place for you to be able to go through and create resources and I guess keep things that are maybe hidden from the students, can be data, that sort of stuff. You might like to keep in a private little space. And the last one is the student section. Now each student have their own individual notebook or section group. The teacher has access to all students' sections, so they can see all students' sections. The students can only see their own section. So the students get this set up. They'll have content library, collaboration space, and their section. You as the teacher will have content library, collab space, teacher only, and all of your students. So whether you have 10 or 20 students, there's going to be a section group with each of your students' names on it. And obviously one of the best parts about OneNote is you have full control over their sections. You can write, edit, type in there, delete stuff, and obviously the idea is that you can also keep an eye on their work, what they're doing or what they're not doing, that sort of stuff. Now, I wanted to quickly go over the process of moving through, eventually you get set up hopefully with a teacher notebook where teachers are collaborating, creating resources, moving that to your class notebook, then the process of distributing student section. So this is a bit of a process that teachers often get stuck on when I'm sort of explaining OneNote that they're new to OneNote. So firstly, you want to create a teacher notebook. Ideally, in your SharePoint site, if you have somewhere like that set up or it could be affiliated with a team using Microsoft Teams, you have a teacher notebook. That the point for that is that everyone can access it. You don't have to constantly share your notes or notebooks with everyone anytime a new teacher comes or goes. Everyone can access it and everyone can contribute to that as well. So collaboratively making resources and then sharing them amongst each other. From there, you have them both open. So the teacher notebook and the class notebook both open in the app. Copy the section you want from the teacher notebook into your class notebook. And generally, you're going to copy it into your content library. Sometimes you might copy it into the teacher only section if it's not ready for the students yet, or if it's maybe a topic, topic for later on and you want to keep your content library a little bit neater. You can copy that into your class notebook. So that's just a manual process of right click, copy section two, and sending it to the notebook you're looking for. From there, a lot of teachers get stuck and they think they've done their job. The next part is distribution, which we're going to go through in more detail later, but that's the process of sending the work out to those student folders. As you can see down here, you then distribute and send the work out to the students. Once you've distributed the shoot, the work is then in the student session and that's where they have the full control. They can go in and um, answer their questions and do all their work they need to. And when you're looking at distribution, you can distribute from the content library, collab space and the teacher only section. All right, so that's just a quick overview of what a class notebook is. So now we're going to start to go through things like distribution, review, and student work, teacher only section, manage notebooks, and collab space permission. All 
The next one I'm going to talk about is distribution. So this is the process of sending the work from either your content library, um, it can also be from your collab space or your teacher only section and you're sending that work out to the students. So this is something that you want the students to be able to edit, write on, answer questions, some kind of a worksheet or things like that where you want the students to be able to do some work. So I'm going to quickly go through the process of distribution. So I'm going to head across to my other notebook now and we're going to have a look at distributing. So when you have, hover over this class notebook tab at the top, you obviously get all these cool options up here. Distributing is the first one. You've got distribute page and then you've got distribute section. So if you want to send um, work to the students, you might already have some sections created. If you don't, you need to set up, send them a section first. So the first one you do is distribute new section. That's just gonna create an empty folder for them. So if you send that work to the students, it's just gonna create the sort of setup that you want. And if you want, if you have lots of sections or it's gonna be quite a large notebook, you might wanna look at distributing a section group. So that's gonna create sections within a sections essentially. So you might have a section group called term one, and then within that you distribute sections for all your topics within term one, and then you have a new one for term two, three, four, etc. However you wanna set it up is really up to you. It can be by topic. But first you wanna send the actual section to the students or if you wanna go with a section group. So that's what you're gonna be your first step. If you're just looking to send a page to students, you've already got section groups and sections set up, you're looking at section, you're looking at distributing pages. Now you've got a few options here. Distributing page is obviously just gonna send whatever page you're clicked on at the time, that's gonna send that page out to the students. You have individual distribution, so you can set up little individual or groups if you just wanna send an, um, a worksheet to a specific student and the next one is obviously a group so if you want to send it out to a specific group of students so whether that's for group work or whether it's for differentiation and things like that modification you obviously have those options there cross notebook distribution if you have two or three of the same classes it's a really quick way to send it out to all those notebooks rather than doing it two or three times you just have to make sure that your section groups and sections are named exactly the same across those notebooks otherwise it's not going to pick them up as the same and the really cool one you have at the end is deleting a page. If you've net gone and sent a page out, you're not ready for it, um, you made a mistake, or for whatever reason you sent it twice, you have that option to recall that, which is a really cool feature because you used to have to manually go through and delete it from every student's page, which was a nightmare. So we're going to go through the process of distributing a page now. So let's find a page from this personal finance unit, and I'm going to send out... Let's go with this one, looking at income and expenses. So I'm gonna go over to my distribute page. I'm just gonna choose the top one. I'm gonna keep it nice and simple. You see it opens up this little sidebar on the right. It's gonna ask me then where I wanna send this, the section to. So these are all the student sections. You see all these sections here, they match the sections over here on the left set up for my students. So if you want to send it to a section that isn't there yet, that you may need to go back and create that first and then send it to the students. So I'm gonna send it to personal finance because that's the unit I'm using. I'm gonna hit distribute. And that's now gonna progressively send that to the students. And another cool feature you get now is you get a bit of an update on the progress of how it's working. It gives you a bit of percent. That was obviously quite quick. That went really fast. But it, you can see pages will distribute while you're working. So you can close that when you can even close the app, walk away, and that will work in the background, which is really cool as well. So that's a process of distributing a page. And if you want to distribute a new section, it's exactly the same. Distribute a new section. It's going to come up with um, the name you want to give for it. It could be, I'm just going to call it test. And then I'm going to distribute. And again, very similar process that's gonna send that out to the students. So it can take a minute or two for that to pop up, but once that syncs, I'm gonna get a new section on students called test. And then if I need to send a page to that, for example, let's try this page. I'm gonna distribute that page. It should now have that option of that section that I set up before called test. Yep, so that's now there. Even though it's not appearing here yet, it is there. So you can see I can click on that and I can now distribute that page out to the students as well. So there's a quick rundown on distribution. So one of OneNote's greatest features is the ability to track the student's work at any time. It is a live document, it's always syncing, it's always saving. So you can at any time go into a student's folder or use a review student work to check on the student's learning and their progress, which is one of the greatest things that you can have as a teacher. So I'm gonna go through two ways you can review student work. 
First one is if you just want to review an individual student or a few students, it's just going straight to their private folder and having to look at what you need to look at. And the other one is you in the, using the review student work feature where you want to look at maybe one worksheet or a specific worksheet, but you want to look at the whole class. So I'm going to head over to my 8HBE notebook here. It's one of my mock notebooks that um, I've created with four wonderful students, Jesse, Matthew, Nathan, and Troy. And firstly, if I want to look at Jesse's work, this is just looking at specifically Jesse. Just go straight to his folder and click on the, the section you want and have a look at his work and see whether how he's been going across maybe the last few lessons or that specific lesson. Now, if I want to look at, say, all four of my students very quickly or my whole class, I want to use the review student work feature. Now, I have the option to review multiple classes or notebooks if you have the option to do that. If you, if you run the same class and teach the same thing, you can use that. I'm just going to hit review student work. And I go through and firstly, I'm going to choose the section I want to review and then I'm going to choose the page I want to review. So as it loads, I'm going to click on the marketing unit and then I'm going to go to the worksheet gardening service case study and I'm going to hit next. And then you can see one, I've got the option you can see to lock those pages. That's a really cool feature. If I want the students to be able to no longer work on that, this is a place where I can go and lock that. But if I want to quickly review this worksheet for Matthew Beaton, I can see he's done all of his work. He's done a great job. I can see Troy's work. He's missed question five. I can see Jesse as that starts to load. Jesse's done all his work. And Nathan has also done the bare minimum and he's also missed question five. So there's a quicker feedback for me, even out of four students that two students maybe didn't understand question five. Maybe that was a bit difficult. They haven't attempted it or they didn't get time, but I can very quickly get a snapshot of what my students are doing or not doing during a lesson. So a really cool feature in being able to access and get a quick snapshot of what the student's doing is using that review student work feature, or if you want to review a student individually, go straight to their private folder. So we're going to click down on teacher only, and by default, that little you know section is going to be there. But what I want to do is come down here, right click and click on new, section group for me and there it's going to appear for us from here we're going to right click again i'm going to click rename this section and i'm going to call it maths and then i'm going to click straight again down the bottom and click to just add a section this time i'm going to put term one in let's put term two in as well term three and term four all right Perfect, there they are. If I click down on that section group, you'll see that it collapses nice and neatly. I can click on teacher only, it does the same. We get the general idea. If you've made any mistakes here, you can always delete it or rename it. Okay, so don't be too stressed out if you get it wrong the first time. So over on my right is where I have my pages and I also like to have a certain structure here as well. So to do that structure, what I'm gonna do is spell topic right, and there we go. I'm gonna put topic one. And then what I'm gonna do is just add a page straight underneath it. And I'm just gonna put page one. So this is where I might build an activity. If I right click on page one and I make it a sub page, it will fall underneath that topic. I can keep doing that. Let's put in page two. We're gonna put in page three as well. And just like our section groups here, if I click that, it's gonna collapse. So it kind of keeps things nice and tidy and organized because I like to keep my teacher only section nice and clean and tidy. So if I want to repeat that and do the same process, I'm going to click here on this little tab. I'm going to do the same thing, new section group. You know, let's do English and then doing this four times. So tapping once, add section, turn one. Let's do turn two, turn three, and turn four. So get the general idea. And you don't have to follow this exact structure, of course, but see how nice and tidy that goes? And so I can open them up and close them accordingly. Now, this guy here, he's obviously there from the very beginning. You can delete him, so if he's gone, because you might not use it, and you might have read the instructions, just make sure you've got that teacher only section highlighted. You know, right click, there we go, add in a new section, it will work again. All right, the next one I'm going to talk about is Manage Notebooks. This is a really cool place that you have in your class notebook where it gives you a few options to do some cool things. For example, I'm going to show you in real life in a minute, but it is a place where you can rename student sections. You can add more student sections. 
You can lock your collaboration space. This is where you can set up your collab space permissions, which we're going to show you in the next clip, and sharing a link to your class notebook. So that's you looking for this manage notebook sign. So there it is up there. I'm going to head across to a different class notebook because this one isn't actually a class notebook, so it doesn't have those permissions. So if I head across to this one and I hit manage notebooks, it's going to open up a little pop-up window. It might ask you to sign in the first time. But then these are the options that you have. So you can see I've got my student sections here. I can then edit those. So if I want to rename or repurpose that, or if you've created your class notebook with the four default sections and you then want to change them rather than deleting and creating new ones or just having all those additional blank ones, it's much more efficient to go in and just rename them. So if I want to change that to assessment or change that to term one, term two, a topic, that sort of stuff, that's the place you can do that. I can obviously add more sections there if I want to. I can enable the teacher on introduction. Now that is something that is default now, but that was previously the place where you would turn that on. Like I said, you can lock and unlock the collaboration space. So if you don't like the club space or it can be kids are a bit silly in there, that's a place where you can go and unlock that or turn that off so the students don't have access to it. The collab space submissions, which we're going to show you soon. Parent guardian links, if you have access to that, um, if in your company, your business or your school, sorry, um, has access for the parents to do that. Mine currently doesn't. That's a place where you can get that link and obviously creating a link to that specific notebook as well. So there you go. That's Medage Notebooks. Definitely take use of those cool little additional features to your notebook. Collab space permissions. It's a really cool feature within the collaboration space where you can section off sections to specific students and allocate who you want to be in that group and who you want to have access to those groups. So this collab space can get a bit messy and can get a bit out of control. So this really gives you that control back in the collaboration space to come up with some strategic group work and then be able to push the work out to the specific students you want and even be able to really easily differentiate that work for different groups. So I'm gonna quickly show you how to set that up and show you a couple of examples. So I'm gonna head across to my year eight HPE notebook and the symbol you're looking for is this manage notebooks up here on the top. So I'm gonna hit that. It's gonna open up a new little pop-up window and I'm gonna get a few options here. You can see I can edit my student sections here, enable my teacher only, but the one I'm looking for is the collab space permissions. Now what this allows me to do, like I said, is create specific sections for some of my groups. So I've already created some. You can see I've got group one where I have Nathan and Jesse have access to that folder. Group two, Matt and Troy have access to that one. And I've created some other ones, blue and red, where I've created some of the opposite. So I'm gonna go and have a look at blue and I can see that has Nathan and Troy. So essentially when I want to create a new one, I hit add section, give it a name and I come up with the students I want to give access to that. Now I can give reader only access to all the other students, which means they can see all the other sections in there, but they can't edit or do anything to sabotage or delete or get rid of anything. So if you do have a need for that, by all means click that. I generally don't because I like to keep it clean and I, generally, I just haven't had an example where I want the kids to be looking at other students work. Um, but if you untick it, they're only going to see their one section. You as a teacher will see all the sections, but they will only see their own section. But if you do tick it, they will see all the sections that you create. So you can see here, based on however groups you want to set up, it's really quick and easy. And if you want to go in and edit these, if I decide I want Matthew to be added to that group, I simply go in and click his name, and then he's going to also, that folder will pop up for him once it sticks to his notebook. And that's essentially how you create strategic group work. Now, obviously, that was for students, so it's pretty easy to put them into groups as you do in 20 or 30. It can take a bit of time and you might make mistakes. So just get the kids to check um, on their behalf that they should only have one section. Some might have two, some might have none. You go back into your manage notebooks and that's a place where you can fix that up. Now I'm going to show you a quick example of a um, couple of examples for collab spaces. So I've got a couple where I've got assignment groups set up here and a couple of the examples of some of the students work where you can just quickly send work to them. And another one I've got is learning teams where I had strategic colors set out for different groups. But it's as simple as, if I go back to my other OneNote, it's as simple as just copying and pasting the work into those sections. For example, for group one, Nathan and Jesse, I just copy and paste into their section and then they now have this worksheet they can collaborate on. And Matt and Troy have the same worksheet. And for example, if Matt and Troy Maybe we're a little bit of a weaker group. I can go in and edit so their work very quick and easy to allow for the differentiation. So that's a collab space permissions. Definitely make use of that feature. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And to keep up to date, don't forget to follow us. If you have any questions, feel free to write them in the comment section. Cheers.